Welcome to a new planetary and seismic update. The critical planetary geometry that I discussed in the previous update, that was from the 15th-16th to the 20th, but we had a convergence uh, early on on the 16th, 17th, and as you can see we had strong and even major seismic activity very much coinciding with that geometry. We see the red peaks, this is the planetary uh, geometry, the planetary conjunctions that we had on the 15th, 16th, and it was immediately followed by a magnitude 7.1, 7.2 earthquake uh, at uh, the Alaska Peninsula. And then on the 17th, a planetary conjunction, and we see a 6.6 in Argentina, and then another 6.6 .6 occurred after the planetary conjunction with Venus, that was on the 18th, and that was also a 6.6 .6 near the coast of Nicaragua, Central America. And in between, a 5.6 off the coast of Jalisco, Mexico. That was the strongest seismic activity, uh, magnitude 5.6 and larger. And if we look at the 20th, that was the planetary conjunction. And uh, also uh, with Earth, by the way, followed by a high lunar peak. And we had a 5.7 at Tonga Islands. And that so far is the strongest seismic activity in this period. So again we see an obvious correlation or relationship between increased seismic activity and critical planetary geometry. I also briefly discussed the planetary peaks on the 23rd and 24th, today, tomorrow, and um, I said that in the last three times that this geometry occurred, they almost always occur in pairs, that we had mid-7 magnitude earthquakes. And that was the last three times. If we look at the solar system, we see, because this is very interesting, very important, we see today Mercury in a 90 degree angle with Venus and Uranus. Interestingly, also tonight we have Earth in a 90 degree angle with Mercury and Uranus. And then tomorrow is really very tight we have Venus in a 90 degree angle with Mercury and Uranus. So we have three 90 degree angles, but the most important, the most significant, are those with Mercury and with Venus. They occur in pairs, and the last three times that this geometry occurred, we had mid-7 magnitude earthquakes in May, January, and September last year. So let's have a look at a table that I prepared to have a look at the last three years to see how much of uh, this uh, planetary geometry occurred and how often it resulted in major seismic activity. We see magnitude 6.5 and larger since 2020, this is the last three years, and each time we see a pair of Mercury-Venus in a 90 degree angle with Uranus. It is alternating, Mercury-Venus, Venus-Mercury, they are relatively close to the Sun and they make this geometry with the outer planets, and especially with Uranus, appears to be critical. A 75% probability of seismic increase 6.5 and larger, and about 50% probability of a major earthquake, as you can see. So this geometry should not be underestimated. There is a significant probability of larger seismic activity. Back to the SGI graph for the coming time frame, until August 1st, we see here in the beginning the two peaks, Mercury-Venus with Uranus, and that will be followed by a higher lunar peak that is still the lunar geometry with Mars and Saturn. They are very tight, only a few hours in between, and that is a 45 and 135 uh, angle geometry with Mars and Saturn. It's followed by a planetary conjunction, Mercury-Sun-Jupiter, and that will be followed by a lunar conjunction with Jupiter as well, and that will be on the 26th. We have another planetary conjunction then on the 27th, that's Mercury-Venus-Earth, and that will be followed by another high lunar peak, and by then, as you can see, the geometry between Mars, the lunar geometry between Mars and Saturn will be uh, nine hours already. So Mars is moving uh, rather quickly relative to Saturn, and as you can see, but we still uh, have a high lunar peak there, right angles on the 28th, and that could result in increased seismic activity, especially because it is also followed, or let's say preceded by the uh, planetary geometry with Venus. And then later on, on the 31st and August 1st, we have a near convergence of two planetary conjunctions that can be 
uh, critical. Uh, that is Mercury, Venus and Saturn uh, on the, early on the 31st. And later on, it's about 18 hours later, it's near convergence. We have Mercury, Sun and Uranus. And we know that when we have a conjunction with Mercury and a conjunction with Mercury and Venus, that can result in a seismic increase. Later on in August, we're going to have critical geometry with Neptune. That shouldn't be underestimated. There is a high probability of a magnitude 8, maybe mid-8 magnitude, uh, most likely in the second half of August. And of course, I will discuss that in more detail. I've already discussed that in a recent updates, but I will discuss that in detail when we get there, of course. First, let's focus on the planetary geometry that we have today and tomorrow, 390 degree angles. Uh, Mercury and Venus with Uranus, most critical. We can have strong to major seismic activity following that planetary geometry. And as you can see, it is followed by a high lunar peak with the lunar uh, conjunction with Jupiter. We had very similar geometry in May and the larger seismic activity did not occur until after that lunar peak. That is a possibility. We have to wait and see what scenario uh, we're going to have here. On the website you will also find atmospheric fluctuations. In the last week we didn't have really obvious fluctuations. Uh, this may be due to circumstances. Uh, we haven't been able to record uh, clear electromagnetic um, signals in the atmosphere. Uh, it has been quiet, maybe that is a reason why. We will continue of course to update the atmospheric fluctuations on the website and be sure to check them out. This is the update for now. Stay safe, until next time.